Good day everybody and welcome to the review and the build up of the Komatsu PC490 excavator from Fumatech. Uh, in this video we're just going to talk briefly about the machine and then we will go into the further details uh, about the drivetrains and the hydraulics and actually the build process. Uh, in this video I'm just going to go with what comes in the kit and just a general overlay of the whole machine. Uh, what we have here is the hydraulic drive lines from the hydraulic pump over to the boom and to the stick. I've just generally put this whole machine together just to give you an outlay uh, of what the machine exactly looks like and how big it is. Uh, as you can see it's quite a big machine and it is uh, quite well built. The major components of this machine basically the tracks and the car body is in metal. Uh, the other parts like the boom, the stick and the rear body and all the other parts are in plastic. Some of the other parts like uh, the details on the top of the engine cap is actually 3D printed uh, quite well and quite detailed. So that's from the parts. Uh, the rear counterweight is actually hollow and is fully in plastic once again it does have some key notches cut into it which I will show you later gets gets locked into the body uh, the cab is once again fully uh, in fiberglass plastic it has to be cut out to get the windows uh, fitted into it but it, the finish is very very good going further um, the oil tank in the kit is completely sealed you have to drill and fit uh, the three hose quick release connections into it going further uh, the major cover of the of the of the excavator is actually once again uh, resin or plastic coated and that has to be again cut for batteries and other fitments inside it uh, there is a quick release mechanism that comes with this particular kit. It has been 3D printed. Um, I have just mounted it just to show you. Uh, it's been 3D printed. So it looks pretty solid. I think it should do the job uh, well. Now, the bucket has been powder coated uh, just to give it strength and it's much more easier uh, rather than painting it for me. So I thought of this easier to uh, to get it powder coated, it is, which is definitely helps uh, in many levels uh, if you're not very good at printing and you wanted something that's well, it needs hard surfacing so 3d print uh, uh, powder coating is the way uh, to go going further um, the boom is quite solid um, again it is uh, it, it's pretty solidly constructed it won't break it's made of it's plastic coated from the outside there's a metal metal composition on the inside I believe uh, you can't break it you can't bend it it's quite solid and sturdy I don't think it's going to fail that easy uh, in your dig processes okay going to the very interesting part I pre-assembled the drive motor with all with all the gears on the inside for the car body to rotate. The motor is actually a brush motor uh, with a built-in gearbox and it's been pre-assembled. The, 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 the foundation or mechanism that holds everything has been powder coated to make it uh, easier. It's pretty hard. Uh, can't go wrong with that. I still have to mount the speed controllers on that. Now, the next part I'm going to show you is the actual mounting base of the car body. Uh, I have mounted my control valves and the hydraulic motor on already to make it easier. Uh, in the next, in, in the other videos, I'll actually go through all the hydraulic piping and things like that. I'm sure you can see these are the tabs I was talking about earlier. Uh, where the counterweight actually fits in but what I plan to do with my machine is actually get some steel plate laser cut so that 
uh, I can get the right counterweight instead of filling it up with lead and things like that. I'm not sure if you can get this angle right. You can probably see it now. There are two T sections in there. There are four control valves on this particular model, but Fumatec also offers another version with five control valves. Uh, the hydraulic motor is brushless with a pretty strong Jung pump fitted to it. Um, at the bottom, uh, there is a two bearing uh, assembly for the car body to rotate, which makes it pretty solid and sturdy. I did powder coat the bearing housing in the past, as you can see, but uh, it was the tolerances were very, very close, and I had heaps of problems uh, in fitting it, so I had to sand it down once again uh, to get it to fit into the car body uh, housing. The gear is 3D printed, it's very precise, it's very accurate and it is quite strong for the job it needs to, uh, it needs, it's, it's there for, it's pretty strong for what, it, for what it's needed, for what it's ne sorry, for what it's needed in this particular operation. Um, the problem that I faced was there were a couple, there were four holes on the inside that were undersized, I had to re-drill them and um, then they were fine. Besides that, I haven't experienced uh, any problem. Now, uh, for those of you who are considering this kit, uh, it is it is a pretty good interesting kit to build uh, because there is a lot of uh, manual stuff that you will have to do yourself, drill yourself, so that that's what makes it interesting. It's not a kit that comes out of the box and you can just go and start building it straight away. Uh, it does take a little bit of thought how you're going to put this together uh, and that's the fun part of this particular kit okay going further the tracks again once again I've got all the tracks powder coated um, I hope this process is going to help me because it's hard uh, however there's one disadvantage with uh, powder coating is if it chips uh, it can flake out so hopefully that doesn't happen to me um, once I've powder coated everything, because the pins are in a transition fit, so they are quite tight or an interference fit, uh, I had to drill the holes quickly with the right size drill so that I could push, push the pins in and then there wouldn't be any slop. Uh, the gear drives are nice and solid, they are two pieces. Uh, there is an external cover on the outside that actually has screws running uh, right through it, you know, so that's pretty pretty good and solid. It's nice and heavy. The drive mechanism, okay, let me get this out because it's pretty solidly uh, fitted in there because of the powder coating and the close tolerance inside it. I'm going to struggle to get this thing out. Okay, here we are. So, Nice, nice set of bull gears with a set of bevel gears, four bearings, uh, perfect for sharing the load, a little foundation for your motor, nice and solid and rigid, it's not going to come or break out of it easily, slides nicely into the bottom half of the car body. Uh, I'll show you the other one if I can get it out, just making sure it comes out nicely. Okay, uh, that's how the motor gets bolted. I've taken my electrical motor so that I don't damage the wires and things like that. Uh, the gear drives are really smooth, nice and sturdy and strong. I'm sure the brushless motor will deliver enough of torque to turn this entire machine uh, and make it go the way I want it to go. So that is, that is the gearbox uh, up there. Okay, let's go further. Let's pull this bagger out. Okay. Uh, the tensioning pulleys, spring that out. Two springs on the tensioning pulleys to keep uh, the tension on the chain. I haven't put the springs. Rolls are once again powder coated. Uh, the guides or the slides that hold the roller in place, I've, I've completely tried to take uh, the paint or the powder coating off so it can slide and glide. The tolerances are very, very fine on this. Okay, having a look at the whole bottom end of the car body, as you can see, 
uh, it's pretty big. Um, rollers are nice and smooth. The rollers are, are die cast or cast metal with plastic inserts that act as bearings. Uh, force fit pins on the side to keep the rollers in place and they don't slide out. Two track guide rollers on the top. Uh, there's three parts to it. The two roller carriers or the track carriers on either side and the top foundation holds the whole thing uh, together. So, uh, four bolts at the bottom to hold the bearing, the whole bearing assembly uh, in place and there are spaces actually that prevent it from compressing. The motors fit fit on the inside up here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just going to bring it into the light. Okay, there you go. The motors fit in, in up here. Uh, the wires or the speed controllers, sorry. The motors actually fit on this side. Uh, speed controllers go inside the upper half of the car body and there are two slots cut in up here and that's where the cables actually come out from your brushless motors so that you can hide the speed controllers uh, into into this uh, void space up here and then uh, through a slip ring mechanism you actually have the wires go into the car body. Let's bring the slip ring mechanism up here so here we have uh, the slip ring mechanism that actually mounts uh, in there what you have is uh, two servo connections for either sp uh, speed controls or ESC for the brushless motors, two of them, and power cable for each of the speed controllers. And then that obviously goes into your, um, your receiver for your left track and your right track and the power supply. Uh, how Fumatech or Frank has constructed this is he's used a set of bearings on the inside uh, for the transmission of power supply to the motor. So this is uh, one of the very first videos in this particular um, build process of the Komatsu PC490 from Fumatech. This is Kevin from Construction Scale Models. Uh, there will be subsequent videos as I go ahead building these things and I will bring some more videos to you so you can have a look if you are planning to buy this machine. Any questions email us at info at csmi.com.au or visit our website which is www.csmi.com.au. Thank you for watching and we will stay in touch.